day that uh, we were together, you, you said you said something that I, I thought was really interesting because you said, oh, uh, today uh, I, I consider myself a better surgeon than 10 years ago. And yeah. and, and, and uh, for me, it was like uh, I, I was in the early stage and I, I still think that I see oh, oh, how, how Dr. Dinturumi can still improve. But you keep improving, right? Because you have this kind of mindset that you can also, you can always improve and learn something new when you, you're open, your mind open, right? Fernando, I think I'm better than I was two months ago. Oh. Based on certain, no, really, I'm serious. Because I've started to incorporate some of these, you know, some of the preservation, dorsal preservation stuff. And I think it has a definite utility in my practice. So that makes me a better surgeon because now if I have a patient who's got a straight nose, nice dorsal lines, you know, maybe a little bit narrow in the mid vault, you know, the bones look great. Also, uh, how much each one was releasing the key area. So that was really, really fantastic to see that you were always improving. You were always looking uh, for the best. Uh, for your patients and discussing details, like you said, and, and learning from each other some tricks. And that was really, really amazing. The domes. So only 10 years ago, everybody was closing the middle curacosal border. So yeah. open, left open, everybody said, what we are doing? <laughs> but it's totally coming from the drawer intestines, okay? Okay, yeah. thank you for inviting me uh, to this live talk. It's a pleasure for me and honor. And uh, uh, came to Istanbul maybe 10 years ago or 11 years ago. How many times you came to Istanbul to visit me? Oh, five times. <laughs> five times, okay. You are, you are uh, one of my uh, best fellows who, who is... Uh, really passionate about uh, rhinoplasty and really that makes me very happy because uh, to teach somebody and you know if my fellows uh, are uh, advanced in rhinoplasty they, they are passionate about rhinoplasty that really uh, makes me very happy because in this world uh, we have to share uh, what we know I think this is the most important thing and uh, transmit the knowledge to the next generation. And I, I know that, you know, uh I'm from Argentina and from Buenos Aires. 
Uh, I've been in the mentoring around six months till now, so I have to tell that it's a very uh, important way to learn and update our practice because we can check every time we want and any time details and procedure and videos to uh, get a, a better planification of our next surgery. And also, we have a, an amazing professor that Dr. Nakamura brings to our classes. So I think this is, this is like a game-changing way to learn, update, and uh, meet some more interesting people who love rhinoplasty. So thank you very much, Dr. Nakamura. Hola, amigos, ¿cómo están? Soy el Dr. Antonio Marino de la Ciudad de México y soy miembro del de grupo de rhinoplastia del Dr. Fernando Nakamura. Aproximadamente hace ya casi 10 meses, un poquito menos, eh, nos embarcamos en esta aventura junto con él, en este excelente programa de mentoría, el cual ha sido en estos tiempos del COVID, en un año totalmente raro para todos, una gran, una gran eh, aliciente en el sentido de que estás con muchos otorrinos a nivel mundial, Europa, Sudamérica, todos lados. Y se crea una familia de amantes de rinoplastía que está guiada por un excelente profesor, el cual te resuelve todas tus dudas y te pone videos de calidad que es como hacer un fellowship, pero a distancia. Y eso ha sido realmente invaluable. Yo le agradezco al doctor Nakamura todo lo que ha he hecho por nosotros y los invito a que se unan. Realmente es pertenecer a una familia de amantes de rinoplastia. Nuevamente, gracias. I just a uh, uh, feedback and I want to thank you because you are doing uh, our arena uh, plastic easier. You, you are a great teacher and also when, when I ask something, you respond uh, with Naka Flicks. Uh, it's, really, it's really useful. Uh, I start using the, the tanko graph and the way that you fix it. It's really, really easy to us. Thank you. I want to thank you for that. Olá, eu sou o Dr. André Nepomuceno, cirurgião plástico em Campinas, São Paulo. E em janeiro de 2020, eu tive a oportunidade e o prazer de passar um tempo com o Dr. Fernando Nakamura, que é um dos pioneiros dentro da cirurgia plástica no Brasil, a reproduzir a rinoplastia preservadora da maneira que ela vem sendo divulgada.
Finalmente, o Fernando Moura, por uma vez, por aprender com grandes mestres da rinoplastia mundial, como o Dr. Jim Toriumi, nos Estados Unidos, que é o Papa da rinoplastia estruturada, e o Dr. Bas aqui na Turquia, que inovou os conhecimentos em rinoplastia preservadora com a sua maneira artística de abordagem da ponta nasal. E é impressionante a humildade, a vontade e a disposição do Dr. Fernando Nakamura em divulgar e compartilhar seus conhecimentos. A plataforma de ensino que ele propõe segue seu mindset e provavelmente vai ser uma grande oportunidade de adquirir conhecimento de qualidade tanto para aqueles que querem militar na área de rinoplastia quanto para aqueles que já militam e desejam atualizar e inovar suas técnicas. Um grande abraço! They all have similar behaviors, they have similar mindsets, similar characteristics. So um, you're always pushing yourself to be better every day. You're not, uh, you're never on your comfort zone. When you find yourself on pressure, you find a way to, you find another way. You 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 don't stop there. So. And I think these are some behaviors that makes you body uh, Shakir. You're a really, really uh, uh, good person. Uh, good good also, yeah. It's also you. You inspect shoes is amazing. So uh, my question: What's what? Uh, where do you want to see yourself? What's your plans? You are watching a lot of people. You are. Uh, categorizing, I think Dean uh, Roland Daniels is there. Yeah. In that was very, maybe you will do similar things in the, in the future. Yeah. Maybe bring in some uh, different ideas to use. Okay. So you can be key. You can be key to bring different ideas for okay. your your colleagues. Uh. Thank you. Thank you. Teaching method in medicine and rhinoplasty has undergone impressive changes and advances in recent years. How to find time to study all books, scientific articles, go to the meetings and still operate and take care of your patients and have time for you and your family. The online mentoring program in rhinoplasty from Preface Academy allows you to update yourself through classes, edited videos, master classes and daily contact with me without leaving your office or the comfort of your home. Mentoring emerged with a proposal to help no surgeon to work the mindset and to incorporate new concepts and techniques in his daily practice or on structural rhinoplasty or preservation rhinoplasty with precious tips, stretching points, working as a shortcut towards rhinoplasty in high performance. New information is shared daily and everything is under my supervision and with my support. My commitment and my goal is to help you to become a better version of yourself. Come and be part of our family of rhinoplasty lovers. Hello, my great friends. 
Rhinoplasty lovers, very nice to see you guys here. And I'm really, really uh, happy to see here more than 500 people uh, in our group. And it's amazing to uh, have uh, residents here as well as uh, some professors and a lot of people I respect a lot. In fact, I respect everybody uh, from the resident to uh, the professor or anybody here today because I truly believe that uh, if you are here today on a Sunday afternoon, it doesn't matter in, uh, from which country are you, if you're from Latin America or if you're from Europe or Brazil, uh, you're here because you have a different mindset, okay? Because I truly believe that uh, mindset really uh, moves us to a different level in everything we do. And if you are here today, it's because of that. Okay, I'm, I'm, talk, I'm going to talk a little bit in Spanish because we have a lot of people from Latin America and Portuguese as well, very briefly, okay? Uh, entonces, amigos de Latinoamérica, muchas gracias por estar en acá. Uh, para mí es un placer muy grande. Tenemos acá más de 500 personas. Uh, y yo sé que hay mucha gente acá de Latinoamérica, ustedes están siempre juntos con nosotros y les agradezco mucho por esto. Uh, entonces, uh, uh, lo que yo dice es que para usted estar acá en un domingo es porque tú tienes un mindset diferente, un mindset diferente a las personas comunes, comunes porque um, Estamos acá todos juntos con un solamente objetivo que es estudiar la rinoplasia y crecemos juntos. Entonces, muchísimas gracias por estar en acá. Uh, hoy uh, tendremos la, uh, la lengua oficial, no es como ser diferente del inglés, entonces, perdón por eso, pero tenemos gente de todo el mundo y tenemos que hablar inglés, ¿ok? Entonces, eh, la charla es en inglés, pero... Uh, tendremos uh, muy pronto la, el subtítulo en, en español para que ustedes vean todo por completo. Entonces, no, no se vayan, te queden acá porque hay mucha imagen en, el, en la presentación y creo que ustedes van a comprender todo y les, después les enviaremos también el, el, el replay de la presentación con la, el subtítulo en español. E agora em português, muito obrigado a todos os amigos aí do Brasil pela, uh, pela força né? e também por acreditarem no nosso trabalho. Acredito é, muito né, que a junção aí da, de, das forças de todos os amantes da rinoplastia, principalmente os, uh, os otorrinos, os cirurgiões plásticos, todos juntos com um só objetivo, que a gente crescer. E, e melhorar cada vez mais dentro da área da rinoplastia, que é um desafio para qualquer cirurgião. Vocês veem que desde um residente que acha uma cirurgia difícil até uma pessoa mais experiente que também está sempre entrando nas nossas reuniões, discutindo e conversando e dividindo as dores da cirurgia conosco, né? E por isso justamente que a, a gente é, nunca para de estudar a rinoplastia, né? de tão difícil e desafiadora que é. Tá? Então, agradeço mais uma vez todos os amigos, amantes da rinoplastia, sejam cirurgiões plásticos, otorrinos ou qualquer, é, ou estudantes, residentes que estejam aqui hoje é, conosco, tá bom? Muito obrigado. All right, my friends, so back to English, thank you so much for being here. Um, uh, oh, almost 600 people, that's amazing, amazing, really amazing. So I don't want to uh, take your time. Okay, we have a lot of time here to discuss, and you're here to discuss writing classes. So let's start and let's uh, uh, share our screen here and let's talk about rhinoplasty a little bit about mindset and our mentoring program. Thank you so much again for being here. It's a great pleasure for me. I feel very grateful and very happy. And thank you all, each one of you, each one of you that are here today because you're not here uh, just for curiosity. I know you're here because you're trusting our work and you believe in what we're doing. And I, I, I give a lot of value to this. Thank you so much again. All right. Let me share my screen here.
All right, my friends, let's start. So our live master class, I'd like to welcome each one of you that is here today. And I'm pretty sure that we're going to leave this meeting different from uh, the way we came here today. So I think in our audience, we have different kind of rhinoplasty surgeons. Probably we have those kind of surgeons that uh, do Joseph rhinoplasty close approach exactly the way you learn during your training. Also, we have some kind of surgeons that are open approach structure rhinoplasty surgeons. Maybe uh, the most, uh, probably most of you guys do structure rhinoplasty open approach. And also there are a group, a growing number of surgeons that do preservation rhinoplasty. A few surgeons do only preservation, but most of surgeons start combining preservation with structure rhinoplasty through open or closed approach. But what makes us uh, common and unified here today is because we are all rhinoplasty lovers. We all are crazy for rhinoplasty, and that's why we're here on a Sunday studying a little bit more about rhinoplasty. And also we have something more in common, which is our pains. Our pain point in rhinoplasty would be cases like this, for example. When you open a nose and you see this kind of uh, damaged cartilage on the tip and you don't even know how you're going to correct it and how you're going to start this surgery. Or cases that look simpler like this one, but sometimes it's not so simple. It's a primary case with a very high expectation patient that comes to your office complaining about some little irregularities on her dorsostatic lines. So we all suffer with these uh, situations. So this is our pains in rhinoplasty. So to be a rhinoplasty surgeon, we have to have a beginner's mind. And what is a beginner's mind? In a beginner's mind, there are many possibilities always. And in the expert's mind, there are just a few. And that makes our, our mindset different when we're facing uh, a rhinoplasty and how we're going to face our problems and grow using our difficulties. What kind of mindset do you have? Probably most of you guys here don't have fixed mind mindset because uh, you're here on a Sunday studying rhinoplasty and maybe most of you guys have a growth mindset and uh, you, you want to learn more and facing your problems or facing your difficult cases, you have more hungry for knowledge and hungry, you stay more hungry to uh, learn more about rhinoplasty. So what is mindset? If I separate this word, you set up your mind, you set up your mind and you train your mind to have a positive attitude. The positive attitude will influence in your behavior and your behavior will lead you to a certain action and this action will bring you results. So everything related to rhinoplasty, we have to have a very good mindset to face difficult and challenging cases in rhinoplasty and to learn and grow every day. And our final purpose is to have good results and achieve a high performance surgery. So our priority number one here today in our live master class is to study rhinoplasty. That's our target and that's what we're going to discuss today. So uh, welcome you again for our hybrid rhinoplasty masterclass today. We're gonna to talk about many things, but mainly about how to improve your results in rhinoplasty using dorsal preservation concepts, being less invasive in structured tip surgeries and making your surgeries faster with less chances of having complex surgical revisions. But who am I? My name is Fernando Nakamura. I'm a plastic surgeon. I have more than 10 years of experience. I do mostly rhinoplasty, and I graduated with Professor Pitangi in Rio de Janeiro. And I did many fellowships uh, around the world, uh, most of them in Turkey and the United States with uh, these masters, Dr. Nazim, Dr. Dintoryumi, and Dr. Baris Bakir. 
So why is this important for you? The world of rhinoplasty has been going through so many changes and you must be updated. Rolling in a row, an article in 2017 uh, saying about a new rhinoplasty revolution. And again, talking about mindset, probably 98% of the population has this kind of uh, mindset that leave them in their comfort zone. And only 2% have a different mindset there, that they're going uh, for their dreams and exploring new things and trying to evolve their own fields. So nowadays, we know that there is a lot of information. Sometimes we get lost with so many information and we don't have time to read all new articles in all new books. We miss something that helps us to learn quicker and go straight to the point to what really matters in rhinoplasty. So is this masterclass for you? I would say that yes, if you also think that no surgery is a challenging uh, surgery and you want to improve yourself and increase your knowledge base. And also, yes, if you want to incorporate preservation rhinoplasty into your practice and learn some more concepts that uh, will help you to achieve results with less invasive and quicker surgeries. And also, yes, if you don't want to spend um, as, much, as much time as, as I did doing all my fellows traveling around the world and save a few years in your life and using this mentoring as a shortcut in your learning process. So let me tell you a little bit about my learning curve. I uh, studied initially structural rhinoplasty and uh, no matter what kind of gnosis, uh, thick skin or thin skin, I was applying concepts of uh, uh, structural rhinoplasty. And I think it's a really good technique, one of the best techniques with uh, wonderful results. And we don't actually destroy the nose to reconstruct, but we really do amazing surgeries with structural rhinoplasty. Uh, and take a look in this case. This case is a young lady. She had a nose deviation of axis deviation. And this was her major complaint. And she was a very high expectation patient. And on this surgery, it was a little aggressive, but I did what was necessary three years ago uh, when I removed part of her septum and I used all these cartilages to build uh, spreader grafts bilaterally and do asymmetric fractures, uh, out fracture on the left side, in fracture on the right side. And because of her thin skin, covering her dorsum with temporal fascia and also doing uh, letter cruise throat grafts and um, Taylor base reduction. After three years follow up, you can see a big improvement. Of course, some little asymmetries, but much uh, better nose with better dorsal static lines and better uh, tip definition. On base view, also more symmetric nostrils. On two quarters view, uh, you can see uh, a better highlights and shadows. And also on profile, she was very satisfied. And also, I was very satisfied and I was very happy with my results and happy and in my comfort zone. And in 2015, in Belo Horizonte, uh, there was a meeting of Resilient Society of Plastic Surgery, and I was there, and so many big names of rhinoplasty were there. Uh, and on that, uh, uh, in, in the other uh, meeting that I went in 2018, again, Everybody talking about how I preserve the mid vault. Dr. Saban, Dr. Goxo, Dr. Baris, Dr. Jurado, Dr. Toyomi, Ronnie Daniel talking about rhinoplasty and preservation. And I said, oh my God, I have to learn that. So I went to uh, some books and articles. There was no preservation rhinoplasty book, but there was an article from Dr. Saban uh, talking about dorsal preservation, the push down technique reassessed. And then I, I found myself in a situation that I was between choosing my comfort zone, doing structural rhinoplasty, or going to a very uncomfortable situation to learn preservation. So facing new things, studying again, and uh, uh, facing a new learning curve, and new situations, and new 
uh, uh, different kind of surgeries that could lead me to some bad results as well. So at this point, I remember this. Stay in your comfort zone. That's why you will fail. You'll fail in your comfort zone. Success is not a comfortable procedure. It is a very uncomfortable thing to attempt. So you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable if you ever want to be successful. Start putting some pressure on. Pressure on yourself. So we have to be uh, under pressure and put pressure on ourselves to leave our comfort zone. And uh, so I did my first case in 2018. This lady uh, on that time, I didn't know exactly which kind of uh, patient was ideal for preservation of privacy, but I chose her and I was a little lucky because on her profile, uh, she had a V-shaped dorsum, uh, under projected tip, but I did a structure on her tip, only dorsal preservation. And I had the technique I chose was Saban because I read his article. And that was the only technique that I knew on that time. I did fractures, I removed the strip, and I structured her tip. And hopefully uh, the surgery went fine. I was not comfortable because I was very afraid of uh, all that those bones lose in my hand after the fractures. But this patient was good after one year. Um, little wider nose, but she was happy. And I was quite happy also, little low radics. But for my first case, I was quite happy. But what is preservation? Preservation, uh, from, uh, these definitions from Dr. Rowling Daniel, you uh, can divide in dorsal preservation, preservation of the iliac cartilages and ligaments and the skin envelope. And you can do it separate or you can do it all combined and do a complete preservation rhinoplasty surgery. And on dorsal, what you preserve is basically um uh, when you do uh, uh, a preservation of the cartilage dorsum and sometimes you combine the dorsum and uh, the cartilage dorsum and the bone dorsum also and the anatomy of pH preservation you have to understand that the under the bone you have a big piece of cartilage almost one centimeter and this is very important to understand the new concepts of dorsal preservation and also the ligaments very important that uh, in the past we didn't pay so much attention in structural anaplasty because we were uh, trained to reconstruct all the nodes and so we don't need to pay attention on these ligaments every time but these ligaments are very important not only for stability but also to close that space in some cases so pitangi ligament um, scroll ligaments interdomal ligaments and also the connection of the key area the skin envelope uh, very, uh, I studied a lot by uh, anatomists and also this very new article talking about the planes of dissection uh, and nose in the variations on the tip and the dorsal. So basically on preservation rhinoplasty, you replace resection for preservation, excision for manipulation and major reconstructions for minor revisions. And this is a very nice uh, drawing by uh, one of our mentoring members, Dr. Angel Apiani. And if you compare the nose to a house, uh, in structural rhinoplasty, you remove the roof of the house and you have to reconstruct. And there's not a problem if you're a very good reconstructor, but we have to imagine that everything will heal and you don't control the healing process. In preservation rhinoplasty, you remove the base of the house and preserve all the, the roof, and that has less risks for uh, problems of scar tissue. So the roof of the nose uh, is not exactly parallel, two parallel lines, but it's a polygon concept on the dorsum, and it's very important to understand that because this will make us uh, understand what kind of dorsum we want, what kind of dorsum we're going to reshape to give the best results possible for each patient. So the bones and um, I started understanding the bones of the nose uh, in the anatomy, in the analysis. We have to understand that uh, bones have different shapes. They have V shape, S shape, and this will, is very important to decide if you're going to preserve this bone dorsum or if you're going, going to 
reshape it or if you're going to ignore and do another kind of technique. So we'll take a look on this anatomical piece that you can see the difference between the nasion and the, uh, the highest part of the hump. Sometimes it's cartilaginous hump, sometimes it's bone. And under the bone, there is cartilage. So we have to understand all these concepts in order to do very good preservation marinoplasty surgery. And bone reshaping is a concept that at least I didn't have during my training, but I incorporated uh, in my practice nowadays. And I do in almost every patient a little bone reshaping because bones are never symmetric. They always have some kind of asymmetry, some kind of difference in convexity or concavity, and we have to reshape it before preserving it. And we can do it with rests or we can do it with piezo. Uh, the technology uh, helps us to be less invasive. For example, if you take neck, you can do all this surgery without uh, causing any damage to the inside part of the egg. So in my practice in 2017 was everything structured and nowadays maybe more than 75% is some, uh, some type of dorsal preservation. And about the types of dorsal preservation, you can divide it in surface techniques and infection techniques. And it's very important because uh, this helps us to understand each one and also helps us to choose which is the best indication for each patient. So uh, type one dorsal preservation would be only bony cap shape or remove and cartilage shape. So you don't open the middle vault and mucosa is preserved. So it's a very simple technique for very small humps or uh, when you want to load just maybe one millimeter maximum two. Type two dorsal preservation is not an infection technique, it's a surface technique and in which you preserve or remove the bone cap, but you do a cartilage only push down. So you do the push down of the cartilage. It could be high strip or low strip or even middle uh, on the mid, mid part of the strip uh, of the cartilage. Uh, but uh, in fact, you do a push down of the cartilage, you release the cartilage and you treat the hump uh, by only cartilage push down. So it's a kind of a partial dorsal preservation. Type three is already an infection technique. Uh, uh, the classic one would be sabon with a high strip in which you combine with lateral fractures and transverse fractures and you push uh, down everything in block. And type four would be SPQR or caudal or spar technique in which you remove the low strip and everything goes down and uh, you can uh, articulate and do a swinging door with the septum and very good to correct some uh, nose deviations. So let's talk specifically about the type one. Type one is better for uh, small humps, like one to two millimeters. And if you take a look on this dorsum here, you can easily rest this part of the bone or sometimes shave a little bit of this cartilage and probably you won't open the roof, you won't open the mid-vault and you're fine. So this would be type one dorsal preservation. Just an example, this patient here, she came, uh, her biggest problem was her droopy tip and not so much dorsum. So we just shave it a little bit uh, inside there. You can, uh, one very good tip to do is you can break the tip of your 11 blade so you don't damage the skin inside and you can slice some little pieces of cartilage from the dorsum. So this is what we did on this patient and you can see here her post up after some months and here better dorsal aesthetic lines, better tip definition even on a thick skin patient. And uh, this other patient you can see also was dorsal preservation type one and you can see uh, from her side view uh, we can have a very nice shape and also increasing the tip, uh, she has a better profile. So the disadvantage of the type 1 is, is that even doing that and being careful, you still can have some irregularities in thin skin patients if you leave any kind of edge of the cartilage on the dorsum. Type 2 dorsal preservation is probably 
uh, big responsible for the increasing number of dorsal preservation uh, uh, in our in our uh, patients because uh, in the past I was uh, being a little limited to, to uh, indicate complete dorsal preservation bones and cartilages but type 2 dorsal preservation really increased my number of uh, dorsal preservation surgeries because it works for uh, dorsal humps two to three millimeters. It's good for S-shaped dorsum, which is not true in type three and type four, as we, we're going to see, we're going to check. And uh, it's good for not so curved cartilage dorsum. I'm going to explain that later. And normal or low radix, because one of the biggest advantages of type two dorsal preservation is that you can. Uh, treat your bony part exactly like a structural rhinoplasty. So you are in your comfort zone and you don't load the radix because you're not doing an infection technique. In possible osteotomies, you can do lateral osteotomies or uh, medium oblique in lateral osteotomy. So imagine here on this drawing, you can uh, remove this dorsum or you can keep and then you push down only the cartilage. And the same thing here, you can remove that. And if you want, you can remove a strip from this cartilage and push down only the cartilage. So it's not an infection technique of the bone. That's the reason why the radix keeps on the, on the correct position and you don't have an infection nose on this technique. This patient, for example, is a tricky patient because uh, she has this little hump, but she also has um, uh, low radix and low superior area. And we chose type 2 dorsal preservation on this patient. Uh, we removed uh, her bony cap with piezo and then uh, with a straight dorsum, we could have a better profile. And we also put some uh, free acid cartilage with PRP on radix and superior area just to have a smooth transition. We put some sutures also on the dorsum, cartilage dorsum, attaching to the uh, septum cartilage to avoid any recurrence. We also corrected a uh, uh, septum deviation. We shaved, as we said, all these doors here with piezo and tip surgery with structural rhinoplasty. These pictures uh, are from Dr. Goxio. As you can see, on dorsal preservation type 2, it's very important to do the ballerina maneuver, releasing the lateral key area. You preserve the central key area at least. Um, the perichondrion and periosteum attached if possible. And you keep more stability and you release the lateral part um, and you can have a hinge effect on the key area and a straighter dorsal. Here in life, in the patient, you can see uh, uh, we dissect the lateral scroll and we have access to the upper lateral cartilage in the transition with the bone and then we release with a very sharp elevator or you can do it with a blade, whatever you are more comfortable. Here is this patient just after uh, two weeks of the surgery, no swelling or little swelling and very fast recovery as you can see, better profile. And type two disadvantages it's a partial dorsal preservation, so that means you still can have irregularities on the key area, especially if you were uh, violating the perichondrion periosteum in that area. And remember that large bone hump, larger defect. So if you expose too much the cartilage, you can expose also some cartilage defects and you can have some irregularities on that area. You can create instability in big humps, especially if you um, associate this type 2 dorsal preservation with low strip, your nose can be a little bit more unstable. And careful with bone edges. The bone edges is a little tip um, because when you were doing, you imagine here that you remove the bone cap or even if you left this bone cap, it's important that I'm going to put here in green, it's important that you rest a little bit also this bone edge here. Otherwise, you can have this palpable or visible in, in skin patients after uh, the swelling process goes on. And type three dorsal preservation is 
basically a high street impaction technique. So now we're talking about impaction techniques and uh, we're going to preserve bones and cartilage. That's a very big advantage, but uh, you have to select very well your cases. So basically it's a for v shaped dorsum. It's much better because you don't have to articulate any kind of dorsum. So for example, this dorsum is v shaped this dorsum is also V-shaped, a little hump here, but uh, sometimes you can uh, transform an S-shape, a little S-shape and V-shape doing some bone reshaping. Normal or high radix is good because uh, you imagine that uh, in most cases, unless you, you have uh, uh, knowledge to preserve the height of the radix, as I'm going to show, uh, in most of the cases, especially for those who are starting, the radix will become lower. And if that happens, you can have infantile nose. Treat noses without septum deviation are better because uh, if you do a high strip, your dorsum will sit on the top of your septum. If your septum has a high septum deviation, maybe it's, uh, your, your dorsum can preserve that kind of deviation. And short nasal bones are good because you don't have a lot of perpendicular plate to treat. And also you can um, uh, use uh, this technique very easily. So basically here on the lower drawing, I'm going to, um, let me go back here. Uh, on, on this drawing here, we are going to uh, remove a strip on the top of the septum. Sometimes you have to remove a perpendicular plate, sometimes not, as I'm going to show here. So on this promise, you can see the strip very high, very close to the roof of the cartilage septum. And after that, this drops down and you have the push down effect impaction technique of, of both bones and cartilage. One little trick that, that you can use is um, use some uh, a scissor, a curved scissor, and do some relaxation incisions under the key area. So if you have left some kind of cartilage on the area, avoiding your cartilage to bend and to become straight, you can cut the little cuts and this will be relaxed and your dorsum will become straighter. Remember that this is the cartilage treatment. It's only going to go everything down after you do your fracture. So you have to do uh, lateral fractures as well as transverse fractures, both on let down and push down procedures in order uh, to have your dorsum straight and lower than on the beginning and treat as an impaction technique of total dorsal bones and cartilage dorsal. For example, this patient, uh, she had a high strip dorsal preservation and also a Shakiri uh, tip plastic and we have a better profile, better tip definition, more shadows on the resting angle, and very smooth dorsum, no steps, no chances for irregularities on the chiara, even on a thin skin patient. This is a long-term result of high strip uh, total preservation, dorsal preservation, high strip type three, and also chakirti plasti uh, profile is good, natural dorsum, no chances for irregularities, super tip break, tip definition, three quarters view, and also uh, much is uh, very smooth transition and also a very natural result. The disadvantage of type three would be that middle vault can be wider, widen, uh, can widen middle vault. And this is something that you can choose. Sometimes patient really needs that, but sometimes patient already have the mid vault a little wide. And if they already complain about that, you have to pay attention. And limitations in high septum divisions, because as I said, your new dorsum will sit on the top of your septum. If it's deviated, maybe your dorsum can still uh, be deviated. And not good for S-shaped dorsum, because uh, it's difficult to articulate and you're gonna suffer trying to articulate something that uh, is very difficult. For example, this patient, uh, she had a, um, a no complaints about her tip. So we did no dorsal dissection, no tip dissection, very easy, very uh, quick surgery and no incisions. 
uh, outside, just inside. We went there, we removed the strip, and then at the final result, she was like that, transverse fractures, lateral fractures. And after that, no touching her tip, only her dorsum. In long-term result, you can see after one year, a very beautiful profile, but on the front view, her nose is a little wider, okay? She doesn't complain about that, but personally, I think I could uh, have done better or uh, maybe a little thinner dorsum doing some maneuvers. As Dr. Saban proposed, you can remove a little piece of cartilage on, the, on this part of the upper lateral cartilage. You remove it and then you suture. And probably if I had done this on this patient, I would be happier. She's happy, but I would be happier. Um, our patients are becoming very high expectation patients. And we also have to be um, have very high expectations about our results. So talking about type four, it's uh, good for V-shaped dorsum, similar to type three, because it's like another impaction technique it's good for normal or high radix remember it's impaction technique maybe you can low your radix and great on straight nose deviations uh, what is that when you have an axis deviation and your nose is totally deviated to one side and you can move it in block all everything septum nose pyramid central key area and everything will be uh, on the midline any kind of septum deviation, it's good because you have a swinging door uh, on these cases. So here, V-shaped technique, almost V-shaped technique, good for this um, uh, procedure. And here, you can uh, see that you, you remove or you, you only release here a low strip. You come up on the perpendicular plate, and then you go back cut until the highest point of your hump, okay? This is the point that is going to create a hinge and you're going to articulate probably when you do, um, when you pull this cartilage and, and articulate that area. So let's understand a little bit more about the septum, okay? The septum is something that um, mainly plastic surgeons are afraid to treat because they don't understand really well. So uh first time can be complicated but after you do it uh you see it's not uh, a big mystery you go with your um elevator and you find the position of your perpendicular plate you force a little bit and you can start detaching your cartilage from the perpendicular plate very smoothly and you go from the lower part until you reach the um the ceiling until you reach the highest part of the perpendicular plate. And then you know the limit, exactly the limit between the cartilage and the bones, and you know if you have to remove part of perpendicular plate or not. If the perpendicular plate is a little long, you use your uh, instruments. It can be a baby ranger or any other instrument you use to remove delicate pieces of bones under the um, under the hump, okay? Imagine that that gap will be filled when you push down your, you do your impaction technique, pushing down your bones and cartilage, okay? So don't remove so much. If you remove so much, you can have risk for uh, infantile nose. For example, this patient, she has a straight deviation. As I said, she, she has a deviation to the left. And every time I see this kind of patients, I know they have septum deviations. Just ask, uh, just do uh, your examination properly inside. You're going to notice if you don't have it, you, you, you uh, ask for a CT scan, you're going to prove that. Okay, on, on the lower view, base view, you can also see a caudal septum deviation. And on profile, she has a little hump. These cases are very good for type 4 dorsal preservation because you can preserve everything. And at the same time, you do uh, septum correction and also correction of the deviation of the nose pyramid in block. Because she had a deviation to the left, we did a letdown of the right side. 
uh, a smaller letdown on the left side, and we move all these nodes in block to the right. And uh, with septal release, uh, it's much easier because you move everything to the midline and you resuture again the caudal septum um, on the nasal spine. In tip, you can treat whatever you want and feel comfortable. On this patient, we did tachograft uh, and articulated ring grafts and sliding technique, but you can choose whatever you feel comfortable, whatever you think it's better. So here is this patient after four months, um, little uh, swelling, but better dorsostatic lines, better tip definition on profile, she's also better. A little smaller nose, her rating was not so high. So it's quite good for a female patient. Um, and also you can see here the maneuver during the surgery uh, after releasing all the septum from the vomer and from perpendicular plate, you find where is your hinge you do the cut back and see how nice it is to make this dorsal street. After you do that, you position your septum on the desired position. You can notice exactly where is the point where you have to put your suture. And again, it's very good for big deviations. You correct septum deviation, you move in block. And sometimes we stay a little obsessive for correction of septum deviation and that's uh, type four dorsal preservation is a very nice technique for that. The disadvantage is limitation on the amount of cartilage harvested uh, because how much cartilage you can remove from here because you have everything released. If you release everything, it turns to be an extracorporeal septoplast. So you have to be careful not to remove so much cartilage from this patient. And on these cases, you have to be more conservative and try to know how to deal in your tip surgery with less grafts, using smaller septal extension grafts, as we're going to talk about, or use uh, chakirtisplasty uh, only with a strain. Need surgeon experience. It's not a technique for surgeons who uh, rarely does um, rhinoplasty and not good for s shaped dorsum as well as type 3 and there is just one point of fixation which uh, makes us a little anxious about that in some cases so that's why i like to use uh and it's possible when the cartilage septum is a little long i create a little notching on the cartilage that fits exactly on the nasal spine and I put a figure of eight nylon suture on that area to avoid this cartilage from going down because if it goes inside and go down, I have a recurrence of my hump. Uh, this patient, for example, she had an axis deviation. That's the reason why I chose type four dorsal preservation to correct this deviation. But on profile, you see that she has a little S-shaped dorsum. And on these cases, it's important that we uh, do some bone reshaping to turn this S shape in V shape as much as we can because you can see we did let down on the right side, push down on the left side, we did septum correction, but we didn't do any bone reshaping. After uh, the surgery was very nice, very straight, uh, beautiful profile. Um, after some months, more uh, tip definition, a little wider dorsum, but she had a very thin dorsum. I think she was uh, good. And on profile, you can see uh, after one month, still a straight dorsum, but after six months, you can start seeing a little hump here. And she doesn't notice so much, but I notice I don't like it. And if she complains also, I have to agree with her. So. Uh, we have to be careful how to indicate the correct uh, dorsal preservation to each patient. Here, a closer view, a little hump there. It's more palpable even when we uh, touch it. And um, maybe I should have rasped that area before pushing down. 
So not good candidates for dorsal preservation. When patients have a very asymmetric dorsum, and we preserve what is beautiful. If the dorsum is very asymmetric, not beautiful, and you cannot reshape it and turn it into a beautiful dorsum, you remove it and reconstruct. Don't force dorsal preservation. If you have a low radix also, you have risks to uh, have it even lower unless you have plans to do radix graft. Uh, secondary cases is better for structure and very curved cartilage dorsum. I'm going to explain it better in a few uh, seconds. And short noses, uh, sometimes they can be even shorter. So I have to take care. It's not for short noses, it's better for tension noses. For short noses, you have to go for structure. So this patient, uh is some patients we have to really pay attention this is a very thin skin patient and you can see her radix is already low and she has a little depression on the super tip area if i uh palpate her cartilage probably her cartilage comes here under the bone and it curves down so the vasa segment is going down yet she has no support on that area so in these cases after an impaction technique, I don't, I, I cannot articulate totally her key area. And at the same time, I can drop her radix and drop her superb area, and it will become very difficult and challenging nose. That's what happened to this patient. I did uh, a Shida technique, removed bone cap, released the key area, and did a low strip. Uh, as I said before, it's a very unstable technique because I did I released everything and also used uh, low strip. And after some months in the operating room, um, being very critical with my own results, I already see the problem. Okay, I already see that here is straighter, but here I have a superlative deformity. So I'm not happy when I, I I take a look on this patient profile. And I didn't touch her tip, okay? I didn't touch her tip. And after the surgery, you see she came back and it was horrible. When she was, uh, she had swollen, uh, she was a little swollen, not so much deformity, but after swelling process went out, a lot of super tip deformity. So uh, was a uh, problem of the technique? No, it was problem of my indication. So after some months, I revised her and I did some extra resting on her dorsum and also I filled uh, with dicep cartilage on the super tip area and we can see she's happier and I'm happier also. You can see again, pre-op, post-op and after my revision. So we do, of course, have revisions and I really like to share that because I learned much more from my revisions and I think I can help our friends and colleagues to grow a lot with my own revisions as well. So some cases you uh, you don't even think you have to go for a structure rhinoplasty. Again, exactly what happened on that case, look how curved is this cartilage. It is curved. You cannot turn it in a, a straight cartilage dorsum. Okay, unless you start cutting, if you cut it, it's not more preservation, uh, it's not any more preservation rhinoplasty. And look how is the big the depression here on the super tip area. So that's the tricky point, and that's the case where you have to pay attention. Okay, and this other case, very similar to this picture of the patient, very curved dorsum, low radix, and very curved. I don't want to do preservation rhinoplasty in this case. There is no reason why I would try and force dorsal preservation. I have to feel her radix, remove this hump, remove and reconstruct this dorsum in order to have a beautiful dorsum for this patient because she's thin skin, maybe a little camouflage, but this is structural rhinoplasty. So a very important concept is uh, the radix drop or hinge in the past every nose or in the beginning every nose i was doing transverse fracture i dropped the radix okay and it was creating some some patients in fentanyl and nowadays you can uh, do 
inside out fractures where you preserve the periosteum and you do inside out, not complete fractures, just sufficient to create a fragile point on the bone and create a hinge effect. Or sometimes you can uh, no, no, do no dorsal dissection on the radix and comes with a very thin osteotome and do very small little points. Okay, when you do that, you preserve partially the periosteum and you can come in an oblique fashion and uh, you drop this dorsum, but very uh, carefully and there is no big step between uh, bones, okay? You just create a hinge effect on that area. Uh, this is a drawing from Dr. Baris Shakir that uh, illustrates very well uh, what I mean. So why preservation? Why preservation? Because it has uh, many advantages, okay? Uh, when you are already comfortable on the technique, you can um, keep the key area intact when you have patients for dorsal preservation type three or four. Dorsal cartilage is always preserved in techniques of dorsal preservation. If you do that, uh, you avoid using spreader grafts and also uh, you, uh, you can uh, uh, preserve the aesthetic and functionally your mid vault and no mid vault reconstruction because you didn't open it. Fewer grafts needed. Uh, in some cases, some patients have a lot of cartilage, but there are some colleagues, especially in Latin America, uh, I'm sure uh, sometimes you expect to have more cartilage septum. You have a very short cartilage septum. So we have to train ourselves for the difficult situations. And more cartilage septum preserved, if patient needs in the future any kind of revision, it's going to be much easier. Ligaments preserved or repaired every time you can. And more long-term results consistency because you dissect less. You have less scar tissue. You have less uh, problems on the skin envelope. And that's the reason why preservation is nice in some cases. And much easier revisions for sure. Uh, revisions are sometimes similar to primary cases because you can dissect very easily, you can find the structures, and once you find a caudal septum, you can dissect it and find uh, all the cartilage preserved and uh, makes our lives uh, much easier. And for this reason and other reasons, uh, you can reduce your surgical time. At least in my practice, I reduce 23% of my surgical time and I can do one more surgery every surgical day because of that. Well, talking about now tip surgery, okay? The tip surgery is probably very challenging, very tricky, and most of surgeons love uh, doing tip surgeries because it has everything to do with lights and shadows and tip definitions. And look how nice it is. On the mid middle here, there's a very natural, beautiful nose with very beautiful lighting points, dorsal aesthetic lines. And here, the polygon concepts by Dr. Baris Shakir and here from the article of Dr. Yumi, and they basically say similar things, similar concepts of lights and shadows in the nose, defining uh, the lighting points, the dorsal aesthetic lines, the resting angle, and everything that we have to know in order to reproduce a beautiful tip when we are operating. And the first concept I want to share with you is this uh, from Dr. Kovacevic and Dr. Dinkter Yumi. Uh, depending on the way you put your suture on the tip, you can invert your caudal margin of the cartilage and you can create shadow on the resting angle. So this suture uh, helps a lot because Pay attention that you're not putting the suture in the transverse way, okay? You're putting the suture in oblique way. And that makes total difference because when you do it obliquely, you load that part and you create shadow and you lift this caudal part and you create uh, uh, lights and also you open and diverge your domes. Everything you want in a beautiful tip. And on the resting angle, this concept is very important. Uh, this is the desired resting angle. This is not desired resting angle. 
and it has everything to do with what we already talked about, lights and shadows. On this resting angle, you have more lights on the color border and shadow on the resting angle, exactly what you can see here around 100 degrees. This is Chakirti Plassi, amazing uh, technique, amazing, amazing sequence of sutures and very easy to reproduce. And uh, with these sutures, you can create the same lights and shadows we we're talking about. So it doesn't matter if you're using only a floating strut or a septal extension graph. You have to try to reproduce and create these lights and shadows, divergence of the domes, um, shadows on the resting angle and lights on the color border. That really is life-changing when you're dealing with tip surgery and tip definition. And in Latin America, we have a lot of different types of types of noses, and we have sometimes tension noses. But in most of cases, we have medium to thick skin um, patients, very weak cartilage, and if the lateral crura is not weak, sometimes the middle crura is very weak. So that ends up in very underprojected tips, but with a small hump sometimes. And we have to pay attention on each kind of these patients because uh, some of them, they might have not a big hump, but probably they have a little hump in low cartilage and the cartilage dorsum is not straight like we discussed previously. And you have to project the tip in order uh, to have a better definition and better profile and not exactly drop the dorsum too much. So this, Cases are good for uh, type one or type two dorsal preservation with structure on the tip, okay? Because these kind of tips with medium thick skin, with a lot of power healing process, a lot of contraction after the surgery and weak cartilage, we lose a lot of projection and rotation. So uh, it's very nice to use some kind of septic extension grafts as we're going to show. For example, this patient, uh, we operated her, uh, this is her pre-op, we operated her one year ago, and on that uh, time we did dorsal preservation type 1 and tongue and groove suture. It was a very quick surgery, very easy, um, uh, very uh, low risks and uh, not so much trauma. And at the end of the surgery, she was a very beautiful tip. A uh, nice profile, nice to break, nice tip definition. But look at her after one year. It seems that I did nothing. Okay, her dorsum is a little better, but her tip is very droopy, under projected. It seems that I did nothing. So I went back with her to the operating room, and uh, at this time, um, I noticed that her septum was very weak. Remember on the first time I didn't even dissect because uh, just the color border because I did tongue and groove. And the second time, second time I dissected, I had all the septum in my hand. So I removed the little piece of cartilage. And on this kind of septum, it's very good to use tachograph. And that's what we did on this case. We um, harvested that piece of cartilage. We did a partial cut on that cartilage and with this partial cut, we fold it as we're going to show uh, better in the next videos also, and you can put it exactly on the caudal septum. It gives you equal strength on both sides and not shifting to one side or the other, and you can uh, create uh, more stability to the caudal septum. Uh, on the set, on this, on the dorsum, we did pre diced cartilage with PRP, uh, just to have a better uh, smooth transition and uh, correct that little irregularity on the dorsum. This is her at the end of my revision: better rotation, better projection, and this is her in our office uh, also after two weeks of surgery, very 
uh, good dorsum, very good stability of the tip, and much better profile and much happier patient, much happier uh, surgeon as well. So this is one option, okay? There is a lot of options to do and give stability to your tip. This is a very strong graft. It's a side to side and sometimes end to end uh, graft on the caudal septum. And you can stabilize the other side when it's side to side with a perpendicular plate when you don't have enough cartilage like we did in this case. And uh, these give a very big stability to these patients. These patients, uh, you have to choose this technique when they have very thick uh, skin, under projected, and very weak cartilage. Another option that I think it's very interesting is telestrut. You don't use a lot of cartilage and you give a very nice stability to the tip. And I think it's very useful when you need. Uh, more strength to support your tip rotation and tip projection. But my preference nowadays is uh, taco graft. Taco graft uh, is, um, you can use any kind of cartilage from the septum uh, in any size you want because you desire the, the size you need, actually, because it depends on how long is your caudal septum. If your caudal septum is already long, you can use a very small piece of cartilage for taco graft. And what you do is a partial cut on one side of the cartilage, and then you can fold the cartilage, and this will fit on the caudal septum. It's nice because you're going to have uh, equal strength on both sides, and you can use it in close approach, as I'm showing here. You do the extended marginal incision and you put it on the caudal septum in the rotation, in the height you want, and you can really give a good stability without opening nose. So this is a very nice way to do a close approach structure uh, tip rhinoplasty. And of course, in open approach is much easier because everything is already dissected and you have everything exposed. You see your caudal septum. It's nice when you need a, a bigger uh, a taco graft and you put it uh, on the caudal septum. Uh, as I said, it gives equal strength. So the chances for bending to one side or the other is a little less than a unilateral um, septum extension graft. This is exactly the patient of this last video, pre-op and uh, simulation in the office. And, and the last picture is the her final result in the operating room. And for patients like this with very under projected tip and with a super tip uh, depression, sometimes you can design your tachograph in a way that you can feel a little bit more that super tip area and give some volume. So you can, uh, at the same time, give support rotation to the tip and also give some volume on the super tip area to avoid uh, a depression after the surgery. This is this patient in the operating table. Uh, nice transition between the dorsum and the tip, better tip definition, better tip rotation, uh, and more lights and shallows defined on the tip. And the interdomal hanger, which is uh, the combination of a strong septal extension graft in the preservation of the interdomal ligament. You can slide on the top of the septal extension graft uh, with the ligament. The interdomal ligament is a very strong ligament, so you can really rotate the tip and also give some projection. And then you proceed with sutures the way you already used to. We had a chance to published this article recently in PRS and uh, this combination of septal extension graft and the interdomal ligament is this and this is exactly this patient uh, in the middle is this patient on the first month of the surgery and then the last picture is more than one year uh, keeping the rotation of this uh, that we desired before the surgery and uh, we also pay attention a lot on the resting angle because uh, it's responsible to give some shadow on this 
a cephalic portion of the cartilage. And sometimes we slide in cephalic portion instead of removing the cephalic portion, we slide in under the caudal portion of the cartilage and we give at the same time strength and also uh, give support and preserve the horizontal screw ligament, which uh, I think it's very useful. This patient, let's see some cases. This patient, uh, we combined dorsal preservation with structure on the tip. She has an S-shaped dorsum, so I chose for her um, to uh, remove the bone cap with piezo and then release the lateral key area in a high strip to do a cartilaginous push down. And uh, after that, we did some tip work with taco graft and alar ring grafts. And this is, we're using piezo to remove that little piece of, um, of bone exactly uh, on, on, the, on the lateral part to avoid any kind of uh, uh, deformity or uh, any... Uh... So this is uh, piezo uh, doing the bone reshaping, uh, removing that little triangular part of the bone that sometimes can be visible or palpable after the surgery if you don't treat it. This is this patient on final result. You see we can completely remove that S-shaped dorsum and uh, change the shape of this dorsum and change the shape of this nose having a better super tip break and better tip definition. For a male patient, it's also interesting. Uh, this patient has an S-shaped dorsum also, and we use it piezo as well to remove the bone cap and also, but on this case, we didn't do any high strip. We only did uh, remove, we only removed a piece of bone there, corrected some cartilage deviation and tip work with structural rhinoplasty using taco graft. This was dorsal preservation type one. You can see here a better uh, profile, a better super tip break, and much more balanced nose for this patient. And this lady also, she came uh, to our office and uh, on the front view, she you notice she has very thin skin and her tip is a little deviated to the right and she had also a deformity, a symmetry of the lateral crura. One side was convex and the other, the other, other side was uh, a little concave. And her dorsal aesthetic lines were not uh, totally symmetric. We did on her a correction of a big septum deviation that she had. We did a low strip and uh, we uh, rasped a little bit her bone cap and then proceeded with uh, medium oblique fracture and lateral fractures. And on, the, on the tip, we stabilized her tip with a taco graft and also with um, uh, only graft on the right side and a ring graft to improve the symmetry and, get, and give a better uh, definition. Here is her front view, uh, better dorsal static lines, better tip definition. Also from the helicopter view, better dorsal static lines, even on thin skin patient. And here showing the profile, uh, more straight dorsum with a little super tip break and better columella as well, and infra tip break, infra tip lobule, giving a more balanced nose for her face. Here is uh, her three quarter view. So basically, uh, we really believe on this combination of structure and preservation of the plastic. And we think that uh, two worlds have to uh, be together. So structure and preservation maybe is the best combination for many cases uh, because we can uh, preserve more structures, uh, achieve better, uh, not exactly better results, but uh, less invasive and preserve more cartilage and maybe have consistency in long term. So about the online rhinoplasty mentoring program, um nowadays we have too much information coming from every side we have information um about every kind of surgery and even for us that we study rhinoplasty every day sometimes it's difficult to uh 
see everything that is new and try in our patients. So it's really difficult. So the online rhinoplasty mentoring program, if you compare it with the cone of learning, if you are on the top of this pyramid uh, and you only read articles or books, uh, you after two weeks, you tend to remember just a very small percentage of what you read. But instead of that, if you watch some videos, for example, like edited videos or quick maneuver videos, you absorb around 50% of the information. And also, if you participate in live discussions, like we do every week in our mentoring, um, uh, probably you're going to absorb more than 70 to 90% 90, 90 of the information. In our program, we try to record everything uh, in high resolution, sometimes 4K, to give you a sensation that you are in the operating room and you, have, uh, you can visualize the maneuvers even better than if you were with me in the operating room. So the quality of the, move, the videos, we're always improving, but we're uh, working on uh, keep improving every day. And what is about mentoring? What is this for? Mentoring actually uh, will help you with some directions in what you do. Uh, we'll help you with some training. We'll give you support and motivation to achieve your goals. And our final goal, of course, is your success in your career of rhinoplasty surgeon. So what comes in our mentoring program? What comes with the subscription? We have everyday activities in our groups. We have weekly activities, like we said, discussing articles, clinical cases, live uh, in our weekly meeting. We have monthly master classes with top surgeons in the world and highlights of meetings every time uh, we go for a meeting. We update you guys, even if you cannot go uh, with us to the meeting. In permanent in the flat platform, you have everything that happens in the mentoring, all the master classes, all the discussions, all quick maneuvers from about structural rhinoplasty, secondary rhinoplasty, and preservation rhinoplasty. So in our groups, it's very busy. Uh, our members participate a lot, and that's amazing. And they call that NACA flicks. And it's amazing how we grow with the discussion very high level discussion with surgeons from all over the world. And highlights, for example, uh, the next meeting, if we are allowed to go to Turkey, we're going there and we're going to update everybody in the mentoring group of what is new around uh, rhinoplasty on these meetings. And master classes we have every month, and it's a pleasure to have big names of rhinoplasty coming into our discussion uh, and it's a very high level discussion and with no time limit and we can ask anything and we can learn a lot from this. So basically we have edited video surgeries, private groups, lectures, congress highlights, uh, ex exclusive master classes and exclusive mentoring lives uh, in our online mentoring program. So instead of me speaking about mentoring program, I prefer you uh, to see uh, the opinions about the mentoring from our members, okay? So I asked them to score from zero to 10, how was their knowledge in structural rhinoplasty before the mentoring program and after the mentoring program? And you can uh, see very clearly that they feel more comfortable with structural rhinoplasty. And it's even more, uh, evident when they talk about the preservation rhinoplasty. Most of uh, surgeons come to our group uh, knowing nothing about preservation rhinoplasty and after some months they are already doing preservation rhinoplasty and that makes me very proud. So what do you find most valuable in the mentoring? In the mentoring the content of the online platform is the number one and then the weekly master classes like I said in the uh, learning pyramid the, those are the two best ways for to learn and to memorize all the information. And what is the greatest, greatest value of our mentoring is the acquired knowledge of the techniques that they learn. And talking about prices, okay, um, on the first day of the mentoring, some people 
think that it's more expensive. But after uh, being in the mentoring for some months, everybody uh, thinks that mentoring is worth. So about the subscription, let's do just a little comparison. Okay, I already visited many surgeons around the world, and I can tell you that if you go just for one week outside of your country to visit somebody and you include airplane ticket, hotel accommodation, registration, uh, watching a limited number of surgeries, you're going to expend at least $5,000. If I uh, uh, analyze what I did so far, so I went so many times to Turkey, to Chicago, to United States, and to Germany to visit uh, surgeons, top surgeons around the world, and that was amazing. But easily, I expend more than $150,000 doing this. So what is our focus in the purpose of our mentoring? Exactly close distance. Close distances between uh, rhinoplasty surgeons and uh, the famous top surgeons in the world in an affordable way, an accessible way, so everybody can link the information, learn from each other, and grow together. So the link for uh, subscribing in our mentoring program uh, will be available in the chat here and also in the groups for those who are interested in becoming part of our big family of rhinoplasty lovers. And registrations are opening uh, from now on and only for a few days. Uh, if you subscribe to our mentoring, you're gonna have as bonus uh, our surgical materials. It's an ebook with our surgical materials, so you can uh, also buy it. I think it's very important to do rhinoplasty, especially in preservation of rhinoplasty. And also our other ebook with the step by step of our surgical uh, patient management in our institute, I think can be useful. You can mirror the information to your practice and use it as a shortcut. This already happens. Every, everybody who are a member of our mentoring program have a special discount in our hands-on cadaver dissection that happens every month here in our city. And it's a pleasure to have you here for one week. We uh, do many things together. Uh, we learn a lot from each other, not only rhinoplasty, but uh, everything. And it's amazing to have this contact with uh, you guys. And also another bonus, the discount, our new course that's coming on. Uh, every surgeon in the world probably uh, had or will have pain in the, in the neck. Because of the position we stay during the surgery, we have a lot of pain in the neck. So we're designing a new course with some exercises that people can do to avoid this kind of pain or to treat some uh, pain that you might have. So in review, uh, I have no words to thank you, each one of you here today. Thank you for your attention and your support and for believing in our work since the beginning. And the word that uh, resume everything is gratitude. So coming together is only a beginning. Keeping together is a progress and working together is a success. So the must take home message is that rhinoplasty is a real challenge. As I always say, we have to keep growing, keep evolving, to keep succeeding. We can never stop. That's why we have a mentoring and not a course because on the mentoring, uh, mentoring is good for a surgery that has an endless learning curve like rhinoplasty. We never become masters in rhinoplasty because it's an endless curve. And that's why uh, we cannot have a uh, two or three months course. We have to have a mentoring to uh, evolve every day and progress every day. And when we see our masters on the top, uh, we have to think that to reach the top, they pass through many things in their lives, okay? So we don't become masters um, in one day or one month or in one year. 
we become masters because of uh, things that we build during our lives. And that's our journey in rhinoplasty. So this is one of the memorable moments uh, that I remember and will remember forever. And I'll share with you here. And uh, we were together. You, you said you said something that I, I thought it was really interesting because you said, "Oh, uh, today uh, I, I consider myself a better surgeon than, than years ago." And yeah. and, and, and uh, for me, it was like uh, I, I was in the early stage, and uh, I still think that I think, oh, how how Doctor Ingram can still improve, but you keep improving right because that this kind of mindset that you can also you can always improve and learn something new when you keep your open your mind open right Fernando I think I'm better than I was two months ago oh. based on certain no oh, really I'm serious because I've started to incorporate some of these you know some of the preservation of preservation stuff and I think it has a definite utility in my practice yes so that makes me a better surgeon Okay, so everybody take a look in the mirror and see your biggest competitor. So our biggest challenge is to be a better, a better version of ourselves every day. So be the best version of yourself and thank you again for your attention. All right, my friends, thank you so much. Thank you so much. We had six, 600, six, uh, more than 600 people uh, watching us today. It was amazing, really amazing. I feel very uh, grateful uh, for that. Okay, thank you so much. Entonces, amigos de Latinoamérica que hablan español, muchísimas gracias. Nosotros tuvimos más de 600 personas acá con nosotros. Eh, me quedo muy contento y creo que, uh, como les dije en el comienzo, uh, estamos juntos acá con un solamente objetivo que es estudiar la rinoplastia. Entonces, uh, cuando tenemos un solamente objetivo, unimos las fuerzas y, y crecemos todos juntos. Uh, então, amigos do Brasil também, cirurgiões plásticos, otorrinos, muito obrigado aí pela presença. Foi uh, muito gratificante ter mais de 600 pessoas aqui. É, isso mostra o quanto a nossa união é, nos deixa mais fortes né, no estudo da rinoplastia, que é um desafio para qualquer pessoa, desde quem está começando até quem, tá, quem já é, é um mestre na rinoplastia. É importante a gente estar... Uh, uh, sempre estar crescendo né, nessa, nessa área da rinoplastia, porque realmente é um verdadeiro desafio. Uh, então, amigos, well, my friends, um, here in YouTube, sometimes it's difficult, uh, we don't have, like, uh, in other uh, platforms, we don't have, uh, it's not so easy to see you face to face and answer all your questions. So I'm gonna share here, um, uh, our team here can share with you guys uh, the link for the subscription for, for those who are interested in our program, okay? And feel free also to contact me personally if you have any questions regard, regarding our rhinoplasty mentoring program. And I really hope that this information that we gave to you today uh, is useful of course we uh, I already thought that I was taking too much time of you guys you're all doctors very busy uh, but there's so many information so this is nothing compared to everything we have to discuss about rhinoplasty okay uh, a lot of details that I cannot uh, teach uh, here because we don't have time right but I hope uh, some I, I think I separated some uh, important concepts that you can apply uh, tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow in your office, tomorrow in your operating room, and you start thinking a little bit more about rhinoplasty in a different way, 
and trying to leave your comfort zone and uh, keep evolving, right? It, like I said, it doesn't mean that what you do is not correct. Uh, it doesn't mean that what I was doing in the past was not correct. I think everybody here have good results. But we always can improve. Uh, we always can leave a little bit our comfort zone. And I don't think you guys have to stop doing structure and plastic. Uh, that's crazy. Okay, structure and plastic is so good. Uh, I do it every day, mostly on the tip nowadays, but I do it every day. So you don't have to change what you do. You just uh, can incorporate some new concepts of structure or preservation and plastic. Okay? Entonces, amigos, lo que dije es que tú no tienes que parar o cambiar lo que tú ya haces en tus cirugías. Okay? Tú puedes seguir con todo lo que tú haces, sea uh, rinoplastia cerrada, Joseph, sea estructural uh, o cualquier uh, técnica que tú utilices, tú necesitas cambiar todo. Okay? Pero tú puedes incorporar conceptos nuevos, conceptos um, de rinoplastia estructural, de preservación en tu rutina y poco a poco tú vas mejorando tu resultado y, y uh, mirando nuevamente tu zona de confort. ¿okay? Entonces, el objetivo uh, nuestro no es cambiar lo que tú ya haces, pero sí uh, mejorar lo que tú ya haces. ¿okay? Entonces, esto es el objetivo. Y todos nosotros tenemos lo que mejorar. All right, my friends. Again, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I feel very grateful. Uh, to share a little bit of our routine here with you. I feel very grateful to have people from all over the world uh, in our mentoring program and also uh, contacting us to become part of our group. And it's amazing. Uh, like I said, we have we had more than what we generally have in our live master classes. So it's amazing to have uh, more than 660 people here uh in our uh live master class right um thank you so much again okay i'm gonna leave here the video that we put in the beginning for those who didn't watch and uh any questions please feel free to contact our team here and text me message everybody here maybe you're part of one of our groups in telegram or what's up and you can text me uh and i'll be very glad to answer you okay uh, amigos de latinoamérica tenemos una versión tendre, tendremos una versión de esta charla con subtítulos en español okay para los que desean uh, vamos a enviar después el link para que ustedes vean con calma todas las informaciones y uh, lo que dije es uh, estoy disponible para contestar cualquier duda en probablemente todos ustedes ya son parte de uno de nuestros grupos de Telegram o de WhatsApp. Entonces, ustedes pueden contactarme o contactar a nuestro, nuestro equipo para que conteste tus dudas al respecto de la mentoría o cualquier otra cosa uh, o cualquier otro producto que nosotros tenemos del hands-on o de la mentoría o de visitarnos. Cualquier cosa okay? Uh, again, my friends, thank you so much. It was really, really amazing to be here with you today. Okay, thank you again. Have a nice evening. Have a nice Sunday for uh, people in Latin America and people in Europe. It's already very late, right? See you guys uh, in our groups. Thank you. that 
uh, we work together. You, you said you said something that I, I thought it was really interesting because you said, "Oh, uh, today uh, I, I consider myself a better surgeon than 10 years ago," and yeah. and, and, and uh, for me it was like uh, I, I was in the early stage, and I, I still think that I think, "Oh, look, how how Dr. Dieterich can still improve?" But you keep improving, right? Because you have this kind of mindset that you can also you can always improve and learn something new, and you you're open, your mind open, right? Nando, I think I'm better than I was two months ago, oh. based on certain. No, really, I'm serious because I've started to incorporate some of these, you know, some of the preservation, some preservation stuff, and I think it has a definite utility in my practice. So that makes me a better surgeon because now if I have a patient who's got a straight nose, nice dorsal lines, you know, maybe a little bit narrow in the mid vault, you know, the bones look great. Also, uh, how much each one was releasing the key area. So that was really, really fantastic to see that you are always improving. You are always looking uh, for the best uh, for your patients and discussing details, like you said, and, and learning from each other some tricks. And that was really, really amazing. It does. So only 10 years ago, everybody was closing the middle curacosal border. Very so pinchy. Left open, left open, everybody said, what are you are doing? <laughs> but it's totally coming from the drawer industries, OK? Okay, yeah. thank you for inviting me uh, to this live talk. It's a pleasure for me and honor. And uh, uh, you came to Istanbul maybe 10 years ago or 11 years ago. How many times you came to Istanbul to visit me? Oh, five times. <laughs> five times, okay. You are, you are uh, one of my uh, best fellows who, who is... Uh, really passionate about uh, rhinoplasty and really that makes me very happy because uh, to teach somebody and you know if my fellows uh, are uh, advanced in rhinoplasty if they are passionate about rhinoplasty that really uh, makes me very happy because in this world uh, we have to share uh, what we know I think this is the most important thing and uh, transmit the knowledge to the next generation. And I, I know that, you know, uh, I'm from Argentina and from Buenos Aires 
Uh, I've been in the mentoring around six months till now. So I have to tell that it's a very uh, important way to learn and update our practice because we can check every time we want and any time details and procedure and videos to uh, get a, a better planification of our next surgery. And also we have a, an amazing professor that Dr. Nakamura brings to our classes. So I think this is, this is like a game changing way to learn, update and uh, meet some more interesting people who love rhinoplasty. So thank you very much, Dr. Nakamura. Hola amigos, ¿cómo están? Soy el Dr. Antonio Marino de la Ciudad de México y soy miembro del de grupo de rhinoplastia del Dr. Fernando Nakamura. Aproximadamente hace ya casi 10 meses, un poquito menos, eh, nos embarcamos en esta aventura junto con él, en este excelente programa de mentoría, el cual ha sido en estos tiempos del COVID, en un año totalmente raro para todos, una gran, una gran eh, aliciente en el sentido de que estás con muchos otorrinos a nivel mundial, Europa, Sudamérica, todos lados. Y se crea una familia de amantes de rinoplastía que está guiada por un excelente profesor, el cual te resuelve todas tus dudas y te pone videos de calidad que es como hacer un fellowship, pero a distancia. Y eso ha sido realmente invaluable. Yo le agradezco al doctor Nakamura todo lo que ha hecho por nosotros y los invito a que se unan. Realmente es pertenecer a una familia de amantes de rinoplastia. Nuevamente, gracias. question I trust a, a feedback and I want to thank you because you are doing uh, our uh, rhinoplasty easier you you are a great teacher and also when when I ask something respond uh, without NACA flicks uh, it's really it's really useful uh, I start using the, the tachograph and the way that you fix it it's really Olá, eu sou o Dr. André Nepomuceno, cirurgião plástico em Campinas, São Paulo, e em janeiro de 2020 eu tive a oportunidade e o prazer de passar um tempo com o Dr. Fernando Nakamura, que é um dos pioneiros dentro da cirurgia plástica no Brasil, a reproduzir a rinoplastia preservadora da maneira que ela vem sendo divulgada atualmente. 
E Dr. Fernanda Camura, por sua vez, por aprender com grandes mestres da rinoplastia mundial, como o Dr. Jim Toriumi, nos Estados Unidos, que é o Papa da rinoplastia estruturada, e Dr. Bari Sakir, na Turquia, que inovou os conhecimentos em rinoplastia preservadora com a sua maneira artística de abordagem da ponta nasal. E é impressionante a humildade, a vontade e a disposição do Dr. Fernando Nakamura em divulgar e compartilhar seus conhecimentos. A plataforma de ensino que ele propõe segue seu mindset e provavelmente vai ser uma grande oportunidade de adquirir conhecimento de qualidade tanto para aqueles que querem militar na área de rinoplastia quanto para aqueles que já militam e desejam atualizar e inovar suas técnicas. Um grande abraço! Estou no lugar da They all have similar behaviors, have mm. similar mindsets, similar characteristics. So um, you're always pushing yourself to be better every day. You're not, uh, you're never on your comfort zone. When you find yourself on a pressure, you find a way to, you find another way. You you you, you don't stop there. So, and I think these are some behaviors that makes you uh body shakir you a really really uh, a, a good person my friend a good good also, yeah. it's also you you inspection is amazing so uh my question is what's what uh where do you want to see yourself what's your plans you are watching a lot of people you are uh categorizing i think Dean, uh, Rolly Daniels did that. Yeah. In the close by. Maybe you will do similar things in the, in the future. Yeah. Maybe bringing some uh, different ideas to use. Okay. So you can be key. You can be key to bring the different ideas for you. your, your colleagues. Huh? Thank you. Thank you. Teaching method in medicine and rhinoplasty has undergone impressive changes and advances in recent years. How to find time to study all books, scientific articles, go to the meetings and still operate and take care of your patients and have time for you and your family. The online mentoring program in rhinoplasty from Preface Academy allows you to update yourself through classes, edited videos, master classes and daily contact with me without leaving your office or the comfort of your home. Nothing more with also help those students work the mindset to incorporate new concepts and techniques in his daily practice or on structural rhinoplasty or preservation rhinoplasty with precious tips straight to the point working as a shortcut towards rhinoplasty in high performance. New information is shared daily and everything is under my supervision and with my support. My commitment and my goal is to help you to become a better version of yourself. Come and be part of our family of rhinoplasty lovers.